makeup version of the chocolate cake I made for my wedding. And I'm gonna do it with my mom's famous frosting. Recently, my mom has been diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer's. To see the woman that you've learned from and admired slowly fade away, it's tough. All the more reason I have to win this. I gotta bring it home for my mama. All right. I just got called up second. I'm so excited. I did a little bow. I made an orange and chocolate mini cake with toasted orange scented coconut topped with dark chocolate buttercream. And the inspiration for this cake came from where? So I made a version of this chocolate cake for my wedding. Let's have a little taste. That icing is sublime. Oh. It is absolutely delicious. Soft, creamy, subtle hints of that bitter orange. Great balance. Chocolate cake with the coconut, delicious. A little on the dry side, okay. but the two together are heaven. Thank you, Chef. Your husband is a very lucky fella. I think so. Miranda. Hi, Chef Alvin. Tell me. What is the best part of this cake? Uh, the icing. You know what's the best way to eat icing? And just take this, <laughs> okay? <laughs> wow, I almost bit off my finger. <laughs> that is one of the nicest, smoothest, chocolatiest, loving icing I've ever had. You will go far. Thank you, Chef. I am Master Chef Woman Miranda, hear me roar. I love stone fruit. If I could, I could eat some right now. <laughs> Trevor chose the man. Uh, he's a boy's boy. He likes his men. <laughs> Enjoy the rest because uh, I'll take over. <laughs> Sweet is my forte. I am making peach gazpacho, sweet cheese ravioli, and some bacon marmalade. I love to play those sweet, salty flavors. This is a workout, man. Well, without the men down there, it's a little quiet in the kitchen, right? <laughs> Watch out, Trevor. Coming for you. You know the guys up there, they may think it's an advantage to be up in the gallery, but the women down here are getting more practice in this kitchen. I'm trying to get all the bear bubble out. She's making a dessert ravioli. Yeah. Oh my god, that's mm. intense. Justine is so good. I love her. <laughs> Woo! Whoa, all right. Set the kitchen on fire. 30 minutes! 30 minutes left! So I'm gonna be doing a sweet dish today. I'm making a peach and nectarine crumble with a pecan and toffee garnish. I wanna show the judges that despite my lack of baking experience, that I can still put something tasty in front of them. I know how to put flavors together, and hopefully the judges will be able to see that. Well done, Alicia, good job. I think for somebody who doesn't usually bake, I did a pretty damn good job. So here I have a peach and nectarine crumble with a dark rum cream and caramelized pecans and walnuts. You know something? I bite into that, the crumble was crispy. It was like underneath that, the fruits come together, they bind. And the best thing about this, it's not too sweet. But just like me, sweet enough. Thank you, Chef. Good job, Alicia. I'm proud of the dish I put out, but you never know what the judges are gonna say. I did a peach gazpacho, and I did a dessert cheese ravioli. Look at that. That's fully loaded. <sighs> this really works. <laughs> This is incredible. You have achieved so many different flavors and textures in one dish. Wonderful balance of sweet and savory. It's an original. I've never had anything like it. You should be very proud of this. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, Justine. Hi, Chef Michael. Delicious. <laughs> Light, true to the taste of beautiful ripe peaches. You can almost taste the sunshine in those. <laughs> it's astonishing what you've done in 60 minutes. Thank you. I feel good. I'm really, really proud of myself. 
a big birthday cake. <laughs> Woo! This is, I think, the biggest cake I've ever seen. This cake has four delicious layers and three layers of icing, each one a different flavor. And we want you to replicate it. Because this is a really big job, you're going to be working in pairs. And without knowing it, you already chose your partner. Look beside you. Whoever shares your cooking station today is the person you're going to be baking with. Baking is my absolute weakness. I'm hoping May is more experienced than me in this. Bring it in. <laughs> Bring it in. I'm actually pretty thrilled to be paired up with Miranda because she's a strong baker. For starters, we're not telling you the flavors of the four layers of this cake or the three layers of the icing between them. Awesome. This is impossible. More importantly, we're not going to let you see anything. That's right. You are going to taste this cake blindfolded. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, my god. Come on. <laughs> I've never tasted food without seeing it first. I have to figure out four different flavors of cake, three different flavors of frosting with this song. You now have 10 minutes to engage all of your senses except for your sight. Your time for tasting starts now. Let's keep Where's... our voices down so nobody can hear yeah. us. Okay. Bottom, because this is icing yeah. on top. Seven taste profiles they have to pick out. Every single layer here presents different levels of difficulty. <laughs> I tell you, chocolate, easy. Coconut, maybe a little bit more difficult. I taste coconut. If I have one thing going for me, it's definitely my palate. I know a lot of flavors. I'm able to pick up tastes really well. It's orange. Two minutes, you have two minutes left. Pistachio, that's going to give people trouble because it tastes like a lot of nuts. I think it's almond. And let's not forget, by the time you get through to the third or fourth flavor, your palate starts to get a little confused, right? Vanilla, chocolate, chocolate. Hands up. Oh. That's bright. I hope you enjoyed Canada's birthday cake. Now it's up to you to replicate it. You will have full access to a specialty pantry where you'll find everything you need. You'll also find a lot of things in that pantry that you don't need. I'm confident in Alicia and my palates that we have all of the flavors. I've been working on my baking skills, and I'm hoping that puts us over the top. You have 60 minutes to make a beautiful birthday cake the pair that does the best job replicating the cake that you just tasted will earn a huge advantage in the upcoming elimination challenge. Your 60 minutes starts now! I got coconut. I got orange. orange. Did you get vanilla? I did have coconut. Let's go back and... This is one of the most exciting challenges we have ever seen in MasterChef Canada. Even if you had all your senses at your disposal, it would still be difficult. I trust my palate, and I felt like I tasted the flavors I felt, and we're going to roll with it. We're going to go with a chocolate base with a coconut frosting, some sort of citrus zest. We definitely tasted a maple bacon frosting. I'm liking the fact that I have Trevor as a partner. He's strong and he's fast. He's going to keep us on time. We need to have these, these in at the, like, the 30 minute mark. So it looks like they're all starting off by making their sponge batter. I want to show them that Matt and I can work a good, good team together and that we can have fun while doing it. And uh, we're going to win this. Justine is doing all the scaling and measuring. Matt is doing the oiling and the coating of the cake pans. We're going to knock this cake out of the park. Say happy birthday to Canada. Icing is no piece of cake either. It's the thing that glues the layers together. So the proportion must be right. And the consistency, I want it smooth. I don't want it lumpy. Icings are my thing. We're getting along really well. You know, she's a great baker. And I'm happy to let her take the lead where I'm a little bit weaker in the kitchen. I'm absolutely sure I'm going to win it. I have the baking skills. He's got the palate. That's smooth as satin bed sheet. That's what that is. That's Disgusting. sexy. That's sexy. Can you envelope me in this? This is a family show, Miranda. <laughs> Five minutes left. Five minutes. Come on, get that icing on. 
Okay. Look at the teamwork that's with right. Justine and that. Just be careful now. Let's get it nice and even. Those are two cake bosses. Yeah, that's good. That's good. That's good. Oh, God, this is not turning out. Our cake is kind of slanted. Not all the pieces are even. May and Jordan. Look at the icing. It's way too thick. Oh, this is a true disaster. Yes. One minute. You have one minute left. Get all the icing on. Spread. Spread. Okay, leave it. Don't touch it. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, four three, two, one. Heads up. up. Woo. <laughs> Not being a baker, I am super stoked on the cake that we just made. It is what it is, sweetie. It is it Chocolate is. cake fell. Good work, everybody. You spent the last hour trying to replicate something you never got to see. Luckily for you, we still have some of the original. Visually, I'm pretty confident. We got the second layer wrong. The bottom is chocolate. The first layer of icing is toasted coconut. The second layer is orange, topped with a pistachio icing. Oh, we got that one around. Third layer of the cake is maple. And it has a caramel bacon icing. And finally, the top layer is white cake with real blueberries. I'm at a loss for words. I didn't taste one hint of blueberry. Matt and Justine, please bring up your birthday cake. I know our cake looks good. I know it's going to present well. And I need this advantage. Looks quite amazing. You've got great height. There are a couple of little bubbles and imperfections. But a lot is going to be revealed when I cut myself a slice. Now, the moment of truth. Look at that. A good amount of icing between each layer. Good thickness on the sponge. Now, walk me through each layer. We have chocolate. Toasted coconut. Yes. Orange, even though the color is... It's a little bit yellow. <laughs> <laughs> then it's a pistachio icing. Almond sponge cake. Icing is candied bacon. And the last one is just plain vanilla. vanilla. Overall, you made two mistakes. Your almond layer should have been maple, and you missed the blueberries. Let's give it a taste. Tastes delicious. Thank you. That orange is subtle enough that it just sort of comes into play. And then who doesn't love a good old-fashioned chocolate cake? Lovely. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. I'm really feeling good. We hit 85% of those flavors. Miranda and Aaron, please bring up your birthday cake. I know there's a few appearance flaws with it, but I'm walking up with confidence. I, I think, you know, you got the shape right, but what's inside? Read me through the layers. First layer is chocolate with a toasted coconut icing, orange cake, hazelnut frosting, a lemon cake with a maple almond, and then the white vanilla cake on top. Overall, you made four mistakes. Your lemon cake should have been maple. You missed two of the icings. And also, you missed the blueberries. All right, well, I'll tell you, the most important thing is what? Taste. Taste. Nice taste on the chocolate. Very, very delicate, you know, chocolatey. Feel, I can sense that essence of coconut. You got that right. You too can bake. I'm feeling great. I think our cake is the one to beat. It looks spectacular. It's beautiful. But what matters, it's what's inside. This is the coconut, obviously? Yes. And what is the icing in between here? We did maple. Maple? And you know that should have been pistachio, right? 
Yes. Which flavor is this cake here? Maple. Wow, bang on. A few little missteps. You had maple icing instead of pistachio, and you missed the blueberries. Fantastic flavor. Amazing teamwork. Because if you can do that blindfolded, imagine what you can do when you have access to all of your senses. Please go to the front. A classic French millefeuille. Baking. <sighs> Not again. I didn't even know how to pronounce millefeuille until today. Never eaten it, never ordered it, never seen it made. No, 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 no. The secret to this stunning dessert is finding the balance between several components. First, three layers of a puff pastry that is both light and crispy with a rich, buttery taste. Second, two layers of smooth pistachio cream and fresh raspberries. And then to top it all off, a sweet stripe of raspberry coulis and icing sugar. You're going to have to personalize your own meal for you with the flavors of your choice. Now please, head back to your stations. This is culinary warfare, but I'm gonna do my absolute best and I'm gonna push it as hard as I can. It's really anyone's game because Trevor isn't confident with baking, Alicia isn't confident with baking, and neither is Matt, so it might be good for me. At your stations, you'll find everything you need to create this delicious French dessert. You only have 45 minutes. After we taste, one home cook will be leaving us. Are you ready? Yes, yes chef. chef! Time starts now! I'm gonna be using things that I find at my cottage, raspberries, blackberries, the flower. I'm gonna be making passion fruit pastry cream with some toasted coconuts and almonds. I got this. The first thing they need to do is start to make their pastry. Put the dry ingredients together, sift flour, little pinch of salt. Then they will add their butter, which will be cut into cubes, cold. So cold. You need that cold temperature butter because you don't want to have a pastry that is soft and wet in texture. Knead it until it is just firm enough where it holds together. Not too much. You want to let it relax before you roll it out. So throw it in the fridge for at least five to 10 minutes. So there's so many different ways of making pastry cream. The method that they're using in this particular challenge is the cornstarch version because it's fast. Come on, you can do it. Bring it to a gentle simmer, add the cornstarch, keep stirring and whisking until it thickens to that perfect pastry cream consistency. Whisk. To stand out, I'm gonna do two different types of pastry cream. Hey, how are you doing? Um, I'm doing pretty good, I think, for time. I just wanna make sure I bang my flavors out. So what are those flavors? I'm gonna do an almond pastry cream and a lemon as well. You got two separate pastry cream? Yes, chef. Mmm. Good? It's the right texture, Perfect. nice and smooth. Make sure you get all the flavors right. And at the end of the day, Te, you cooked a lot and you have surprised us a lot. I want to keep doing it, Chef. That's it, that's the attitude. Thank you. Look at Matt, he's got that hustle on. Feeling pretty good about the pastry dough. It's not overworked, it looks like it's the right consistency. Matt is so fat. Let's do this. Look, look, Matt has got his fighting bandana on. Milfoy is coming along really well. I am assembling it perfectly, and I am in the zone. I am rushing this plating like I've never played it before. This is the fastest plate I've ever put out in my life. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, Look two, one. Hands up! I'm proud of myself. I'm really proud that I pulled it out. I'm really proud that I have something standing on that plate. Walk me through your milfoy. So I have a blackberry milfoy with almond and lemon pastry cream, and then I did a raspberry coulis. Overall, it looks pretty decent. 
You hear that? Yes, Chef. That's the right sound. Oh, God. It's crisp. Hmm. Taya, this is next level. Oh, my God, thank you so much. I like the consistency of the cream. Delicious. Thank Amazing. you. Thank you, Chef. Wow, that's a fine-looking meal floor you have here. <laughs> Thank you. You use two creams, right? Yes, Chef. So you have some almond, you have some lemon. This is wonderful. Thank you so much. You know, I didn't think it would work, the almond and the lemon, but it works together. Perfect marriage. In between, that blackberry. A bit of texture and a bit of freshness. Pastry, very important. You nailed it. You know, you were a little bit down at the beginning. It doesn't feel good always having to cook because you feel like you feel like you're at the bottom. I tell you, you're not getting any sympathy point from me. This was not made by an underdog. Every time you cook in this kitchen, you get better. Remember that. Thank you, Chef Alvin. The judges don't think I'm an underdog, so I gotta stop thinking I am. Hey there, Matt. How you doing, Chef Michael? What are the flavors? I did uh, the berries that my grandmother and I would pick at the cottage. I did a maple pastry cream because we would always have pancakes and things at the cottage. It was all from the heart and it was all from my family. So this is you and your family on a plate. I think it looks darn good. So let's see how it tastes. Is your grandmother still around? Yes, my Bobby's still around. She's a big inspiration to me, and she's one of the reasons why I'm here right now. I wish she was here to taste it. It is terrific. Thank you. Thank you. Great pastry, light, flaky, crispy. I like the idea of the nuts. Thank Great you. little crunch. Good balance. Well done. Thank you, Chef. Keep it up. A delicate and savory cheese souffle. Souffle is very hard. It's very technical. It's very challenging. You have three eggs to work with. You'll need all three yolks for the base and all three whites to make sure that it rises perfectly. So once again, you only have one chance to pull it off. You have only 30 minutes to make your souffle. Some professional chefs take years to perfect the souffle. I have only 30 minutes. We want you to bring it to the front as soon as it's ready. Souffles must be served and eaten immediately. So we need to judge yours at its highest peak. If your souffle does not rise, your dream will fall along with it. Now please, head to your station. I should be top six. I earned my spot. I've competed every single day. Alice hasn't. Everything is resting in that one souffle. Are you ready? Yes, yes chef. chef. Your time starts now! Come on, guys! Let's go, ladies! Come on! So many things can go wrong in a souffle. Every step is critical. They only have three eggs, and the first step is they have to separate them, the whites from the yolks. They cannot break those yolks and contaminate the egg white. Otherwise, those egg whites just won't whip. There are many ways to separate an egg white from egg yolk. Miranda used her hand, and that's exactly what I would do. With three eggs, no mistakes, use your hand. That's definitely a home-cooked mistake to use the eggshells to separate your whites from your yolks, because those eggshells are like tiny little teeth. They're very jagged. A souffle relies upon the whisked egg whites to rise that whole dish. So if you don't whip your egg whites enough, it will be flat. It's do or die, and I can't go home right now. I have too much riding on this, so this has to be perfect. So I think what they should be doing next is starting to prepare their souffle base, measuring out their dry ingredients, getting a pan on the stove top, melting down some butter, adding the flour to that butter, making your base roux, and then slowly add the milk to that pan, whisking and stirring constantly. I want to prove to the judges that they were not wrong in bringing me back and that I deserve a spot here. Miranda's batter looks very silky and smooth. Unfortunately for Alice, her batter looks kind of lumpy, almost like scrambled egg. 
What's probably happened there is she has added her egg yolks to her base flour and butter mixture when it was still too hot, and the egg yolks have started to cook. In essence, scrambling. Miranda is actually starting to whip her egg whites, I believe, by hand. Look, getting a little bit of volume. I've whipped a lot of egg whites in my day. I know that I have to whip it to a medium stiff peak. Nice job, Miranda. Good job, looks great. Savory souffles are even harder to make than sweet souffles. Especially a cheese souffle for the simple reason cheese is very dense and heavy. And that's why this is ultra tricky. It's just not whipping. Alice is trying to whip her whites, and they are not stiffening up. These souffles are going to take 12 to 15 minutes in order to achieve that beautiful height and that beautiful rise that we're looking for. Oh, my God, it's not whipping. I don't know what happened, but I see yolk in my egg whites. Did you get an egg yolk in there? I did. Her whites are contaminated. She has egg yolks in her whites. Look, 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 Miranda's souffle is going in the oven. Whip it by hand. Turn it off and whip it by hand. Alice got yolk in her egg white. If I was in that position, I would really want someone to come help me. Oh, my goodness. Look at this. Miranda's helping her. Miranda's looking to help her. I mean, this is, it's classic. Get violent. One of these home cooks is going home and Miranda is helping Alice. And she only has three minutes to get that souffle in the oven or Actually, it's over. Actually, those whites are stiffening up much better than I thought. My goodness. You have to admire both of these home cooks, you know. Miranda, on one hand, is trying to help Alice, and Alice refuses to throw the towel in. Second chances do not come that easily, and I came back here to cook. I am not going to give up. You take it out of the oven, within minutes, if not seconds, it will start to deflate. Please, souffle. Please rise. The thing with souffles is you don't know if you did it right till the very end. Alice with souffles. It can take a second, but it, it doesn't matter because in one second it won't be, and in the next second you have beautiful puffy goodness. Okay? Thank you, Miranda. Tell that souffle to rise. Five minutes! You have five minutes. You have to bring your souffle to the front. If you think it's time, you take it out. You don't want it too brown, right? Miranda's bringing ready to take her souffle out. Oh, my goodness. <sighs> That one on the right looks nice. Flat, 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 flat one. one. I'm ready, chef. It's uh, raised nicely. Great looking souffle. Look at that. When it shakes like that, that just shows it is so light and fluffy. That's why they don't last for long. No. <laughs> I can smell the cheesiness. Very rich and flavorful in, in, in by the nose. It's time to taste. Okay. After three grueling cooks, you absolutely nailed this. Oh my god. Look at that. Oh, thank you, Jeff Michael. Oh. Miranda, your mother is incredibly proud of you right now. Those were the best words I could ever hear after such a grueling day. Just cotton candy? What? Come on up and take a closer look. It's called Hawaiian Mountain Cloud, or as they say in Hawaii, the Mauna Lei. It's a little mystery on a plate. Now, the key to revealing all its irresistible elements is this beautiful passion fruit reduction. Pour it on, and the cotton candy cloud dissolves to reveal a deliciously tropical landscape. It's not just cotton candy. It's the entire world of dessert in the middle. 
That's so awesome. The base is a Dutch ginger cookie topped with sponge and flambéed pineapple. Resting upon that is a mascarpone and cream cannelle, plus... Oh my god, there's more stuff in there. ...a macadamia nut tuile. All this is surrounded by shards of frozen kiwi. Holy smokes, <laughs> that's crazy. Have a taste. This is what I'm curious about. Oh, the pineapple's just, it's just like laying on top, so like... Oh wait, is there something underneath it too? Whoa. There's too many things going on in this dessert. Like, I need a pen and paper to write all these things down in order to recreate it. These are two very strong home cooks, and this is one audacious challenge. They cannot afford to make one mistake in terms of each element, the taste profile, and the plating. This is go hard or go home. Getting to top three is really important to me. I've worked really freaking hard for this, so I'm just gonna fight. I'm gonna keep fighting. That's all I can do. Good, 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 good. I have scratched and clawed my way to top four, and I am going to nail this. I'm a fighter, and I fought my way throughout the last couple years of my life. I had to survive cancer. All my experiences made me exactly who I am today, and I deserve to be here. I want this, I want this, I want this. I met my family yesterday. They gave me a renewed sense of confidence. I came here to win, and I'm gonna win. I am a fighter, I will never give up. There's a cookie. There's mascarpone, quenelle, there's flambéed pineapple. This dessert is so much for one person to do in 60 minutes. 20 minutes! Focus, stay on focus. I am definitely not known for my time management. I need to multitask more than I ever have. I need to move faster than I've ever moved. I need to nail this. This is the most intense I've seen. Yeah, totally. 15 minutes, you have 15 minutes left. Holy cow. I'm most worried about Maeve winning. No one is more focused, and no one is more of a perfectionist. I'd rather Taya go home. I think Taya's a stronger cook, and her flavors are hands down better than mine. I'll admit that. <sighs> Making their twills now. The dough is rather like a thick batter on a twill, and you have to spread it in a thin, even layer. Now that's a smart move by May. She made a couple in case the first does not work out. Always have an insurance policy when you're baking. Taya only made one trio. Very risky. I don't have time to do anything twice right now. Just 10 minutes left. I'm not letting this cake defeat me. I'm cutting off the top, but I'm losing all the pineapple pieces. So I'm just gonna take my flambéed pineapple and just shove them in. She's gonna make it work. I like that spirit. Five minutes left. They better start building those plates because that'll take a while. I'm like this close to a panic attack. There's just so many freaking components. This is neck and neck. Both May and Taya are starting their candy floss at the exact same time. Come on. <sighs> you got this. This cotton candy is just so frustrating. It won't go as fast as I want it to. And I have like a million other things to keep doing. Perfect, perfect, perfect. This is intense. I mean, both Taya and May are going at full speed. It's freaking chewy. Hi. I've never worked with liquid nitrogen before. I know it's cold. It's really fun to be taking these kiwis out and smashing them. And that's a lot of stress, though. <laughs> 30 seconds, you have 30 seconds left! The palms of my hands are sweating right now. This is crazy. If they make it, it'll be by the skin of their teeth. Let's go, ladies, let's go! Yeah. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1! Hands up! Wow. Woo. Incredible. Man. Whoever wins this challenge better kill it and get top spot because she definitely deserves it. <sighs> How do you feel you did, Taya? I think I did really good. A couple small things. My cotton candy got a little wet, so it's shrunk a little. But other than that, I'm pretty happy with it. It looks good to me. Well, at first glance, it looks as if it's only partly cloudy. A little bit of sunshine, too. 
Let's make it rain. I gotta say, pretty beautiful. <laughs> I'm gonna try the sponge cake along with a little of that passion fruit reduction. The sponge looks really nice. I see you've got some pineapple in there that has a nice golden brown color to it. Thank you, Chef. The pineapple, absolutely delicious. Thank you, Chef. And your passion fruit reduction, nicely balanced. But I do find the sponge to be a little sweeter than I'd hoped for. It's a balancing act. Sugar in the sponge, sugar in the reduction. Overall, it is incredibly impressive to see you pull a dessert like this off in 60 minutes. <sighs> Thank you, Chef. Thank you. There's so many components in this, and they all need to come together. This all comes down to the fine details. Did you only make one? I did, I had no time. Hmm. Well, let me tell you, it is perfect. <sighs> Thank you, Chef. You're either really lucky or you're crazy. Yeah. This is incredible. Thank you, Chef. You know, Tay, I don't know what is more impressive this dessert or how you have transformed yourself in such a short period of time. I have not seen that level of confidence in you yet. You've proven to yourself and everyone here that you belong here. Thank you, Chef. I'm not a baker, but I'm gonna try to bake to the best of my ability. I am making a raspberry cheesecake, a mango and vanilla panna cotta, poached pear galette, coffee liqueur creme brulee, and a pink peppercorn chocolate ganache. So right now I'm working on my raspberry cheesecake. It's a little scary, I've never made a cheesecake before. I wanna show what I've become and doing something new that's kinda out of my comfort zone. Come on, scald for God's sakes. This is a daunting task for a professional pastry chef. I am not a professional pastry chef. I'm making my spin on chocolate bars, lemon tartlets, raspberry shortcake, French pastry tart, and tarragon creme. You know, pastry cream is one of the mother custards in French patissier. One little error and it's ruined. This tarragon cream takes precisely 13 minutes. It's the combination of heat, time, and constant whisking. If I'm a little under, it's sweet milk. If I'm a little over, it's the most disgusting scrambled eggs you've ever seen in your life. My strategy is just to work as hard as I possibly can and uh, get the more time-consuming things done first. To fill my pastry case, I'm making a lemon lavender cake, a chocolate cayenne tart, crepe cannoli with pistachio cream, Earl Grey tea cream puff, and blackberry basil milfoy. I don't want to get this too warm, otherwise it's not going to puff. Now, we've done a meal for you in a previous challenge, so I think Taya is leveraging her expertise because she won that challenge. Hopefully, she'll pull out another meal for you that matches, if not exceeds, that one. I have the most experience in MasterChef Canada Kitchen with baking. I'm feeling pretty confident that I might get this advantage. OK, let's see if this works. So think about the journey that these cooks have come on with. Take Trevor. He started strong. He was first to win a mystery box. However, He's not done a whole lot of baking, so this, I think, is gonna be a huge challenge for him. This is testing his mettle. I've never been to Paris before. I haven't even been to Montreal, for that matter. I've never been to a real patisserie in my life. Now, Taya, she almost talked herself out of this competition early on, and now look at her. She's a major contender. She has a confidence in her that we have never seen before. I'm just gonna push through, stay focused, not get frazzled. Barry, on the other hand, is cool as a cucumber. Barry's been saved a lot. He's shown that he's a good team player. Now it's time for him to see how he can cook on his own. And this challenge is really going to put him through his paces. The biggest thing that this journey has given me is belief. I'm thinking that these chocolate cakes are the bomb. My wife tells me every day she loves me and is proud of me. And this is the first time that I feel proud of me, too. Friggin' excellent. 
Trevor, I won't take up too much of your time because I see you're busy running around. So what is it you're working on? Tell me. My chocolate truffle, chef. And what's in the chocolate truffle? Uh, it's a pink peppercorn cream that I use to make my ganache and about 60% cocoa. So you ground down the pink peppercorns? I didn't know what, I just steeped the cream in it, but uh, when I top it on top, I'm gonna ground them a bit. Any concerns that that might be a little overpowering? Um, I tasted it and it didn't seem overpowering to me, but as you know, I'm not a pastry guy, so all of this is sort of out of my boundaries. All right, well, I'll let you get on. Thank you, Chef. Thank you. I'm definitely the underdog in this challenge, and I need to win. I cannot go back to plumbing. I have come so far as a person and a home cook. They have to work like machines right now. They have to have exact movements, laser focus. Come on. I still have a crap ton of stuff to do. You know, I'm a bit worried about Taya. She just doesn't have the time to be creating as many variations of dessert as she is. This is very intense. She could be running out of time fast. Okay. I realize that my ideas are way too ambitious. I don't think I'm going to be able to do my one dessert. Hey, Taya, how are you doing? You know, not as good as I was hoping. What happened? What happened? I was going to make a pistachio cannoli. I got my dough ready, but I just don't have time. OK, so tell me, what's plan B? I have extra tart shells, so I'm doing pistachio little tarts. OK, I'm not going to ball you anymore. Good luck. Thanks. You need it. Thank you. I go to pull my cheesecake out of the oven, and it looks amazing. Whew, thank God. This is going to set me apart from the other home cooks. That's awesome. Everything is a process. I've got my chocolate cakes. I've got the cups for my tarragon creme. I guess that's the end of that. Things are coming together. I have grown a lot since the first cake I've made until today. So I want to show the judges that I can make a cake that stands out. Of course you did that. Oh, my goodness. 10 minutes. You have 10 minutes left. Come on. Trevor is working on his creme brulee. His top don't look brown enough. They may not be crispy. You know, raw sugar on creme brulee, nasty. I am looking pretty damn good here. I just got a plate. In savory cooking, plating is extremely important. But when it comes to desserts, you want that big, beautiful, spectacular finish. I got to bust my butt to get everything to that display case. Look at Taya's cake. That looks like you're in a French bakery. Sensational. That's great. That was close. One minute. Come on, fill those cases. Behind you, Barry. They're cutting it close. Ooh, God, Trevor almost, almost lost his creme brulees. Get in there. My heart's pounding out of my chest right now just watching them. Jesus. Come on, guys. All of you can do this. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hands up. That was intense. <laughs> I can't believe we did it. Barry's Patisserie features five desserts, including raspberry shortcakes, tarragon cream with passion fruit, and homemade chocolate bars. Taya's offerings include blackberry basil milfoy, pistachio cream tarts, and a lavender lemon cake. Trevor's display case includes coffee liqueur creme brulee, pink peppercorn chocolate truffles, and a raspberry cheesecake. Are you ready to open for business? Yes, yes, yes. chef. Please welcome our 45 experts. Uh, children? <laughs> 11 of them are some of the most accomplished pastry chefs in Canada. The rest are passionate pastry eaters. My god, do like six buses of kids get unloaded? Oh, and these look like hungry experts. What would you like to have? All righty, who's first? Me. Which one would you like, man? The chocolate. Chocolate, of course. When I was a kid, sugar fiend. I was that kid going bonkers off the walls. What would you like to have? <laughs> the cake as well. I love serving children. They're so cute. Do you guys want to try the little cream puffs over there? You want to try that? And they're also brutally honest. You don't like the crust here. We'll get you something else then, OK, sweetie? Little kids are dessert experts. 
I'm above the glass now. This is fun. <laughs> but it's so gratifying to also be serving a dessert to professional. This is actually the very first cheesecake I've ever made in my life. Nice. Yeah. I'm definitely going to try the lavender cake. The lemon lavender yeah. cake? Okay. I am praying that they look at my case and think I did a good job. Thank you. So this is Barry's platter. I think it's got very eye-catching qualities to it. So here we have the, the tarragon cream with passion fruit. That is the money. He created something really unique here. I've never had anything like that before. I like uh, the passion fruit cup. I like the sourness. It will be really nice to have that after a happy meal. Yeah, very refreshing. I thought it had this really intense acidity and tarragon, and this was really interesting when you ate it. Now, Barry said this would be his signature, shortcake with the lemon cream and raspberry. Now, cutting into it, I see a problem already. Yeah. The shortbread's got a hole right in the middle. It's probably from the lack of resting the pastry properly. The enemy of great is good, and this is good. I think that for shortcake, a little drier than it could be. But other than that, it's very nicely executed. I like about it because the raspberry. Look at this chocolate, guys. Barry was excited about this. Look at that. I like that. That, to me, is the business. The perfect balance of sponge and chocolate. That ganache is to die for. Because it's light, it's velvety. Overall, great performance. There you go, boss. You enjoy that. Hi, what would you like to have? So here we have Taya's dessert platter. I mean, if you look at all the different techniques, it's extraordinary. I'm going to serve the lavender lemon cake because it's probably the most colorful, the most inviting. Cake, moist, soft, lavender light. She did a great job. Along with the buttercream, which I think is just simply divine. Wow. I really enjoyed the cake. I love lavender. To see it paired with lemon, it's amazing pairing. Like, you can't go wrong with it. I thought the presentation of the cake was wonderful. The colors pop, so vibrant. So I think she did a wonderful job with it. Mm. I'm going to try the meal for you. You know, the problem with this pastry is, and it's simple, it has too much chew on it. Yeah. It is spongy, soggy. Unfortunately, very undercooked. This is a very common mistake with millefeuille because you see the color, you think it's cooked, but it's not cooked inside, so sorry. So I'm going to try Taya's pistachio tart. And remember, she had to change gears with this dessert. See what plan B tastes like. The pistachio cream is beautiful, nutty, creamy. If that was plan B, I can't imagine how good plan A would have been. She really honored the spirit of an eclectic French patisserie. Here you go, partner. Thank you. No problem. Enjoy. So here we have five different items from Trevor's pink patisserie. Trevor's ganache on the appearance, it looks really expensive <laughs> because he's got probably an ounce of gold. And I think that's way too excessive. Smooth, velvety. It almost feels like very soft fudge just melting in your mouth. And then you get a tickle of that heat from the peppercorns. Really super delicious. From a chocolatier's perspective, the texture is extremely exquisite. That silken quality I look for in a ganache. I like the chocolate, it's so good. I'm gonna try the creme brulee because it's one of my favorite desserts. When I'm hitting this, I want to hear that crunch. Then you go into it, it's too thin. But taste, very important. The crust on the top is missing for sure, otherwise, it is rich, creamy, delicious, and silky. Unfortunately, the crunchy on the top disappeared, but the texture has been cooked properly. Try right, it's cheesecake. Nice, even crust, smooth. Let's give it a taste. That's a really good cheesecake. The jelly on top is perfectly set. Great balance of flavor. I love the consistency. It's a baked cheesecake. I mean, remember, this pipe fitter, plumber, it's not a baker. I mean, can you believe he did this? Here you are, buddy. Oh, yeah. Bring it home. Oranges are going to be the death of me. This is the last round of a three-hour marathon. You can see that the home cooks are starting to feel the heat. Oh, my god, it's like a bomb went off in here. I'm doing a play on uh, traditional Mexican coffees. I'm doing a orange sponge cake, a cinnamon ice cream, 
and a dusting of espresso powder. Tight on time. All comes down to this. My dessert is a really rich dark chocolate mint gelato and a Dutch cocoa pizzelli cone. Both Taya and Trevor are making ice cream, but Taya started her ice cream when she was plating her main course. It's delicious, cinnamon ice cream. Whereas Trevor is just starting his ice cream base now. I am cutting it so close for time on this dessert, this might bite me in the butt. Honey, put this in the box. Thank God the ice cream started because I still got to do a cake, a toffee, a mousse, a caramel. I got a lot of things going on. I need to get this done. I'm doing a play on a fallen ice cream cone with the flavors of chocolate and mint. Trevor, yes, how chef. you doing? I'm doing all right, chef. Tell me, what are you making? So right now I'm making a creme fraiche whipped cream with no sugar. It's going to be very tart because I have a really, really rich dark chocolate mint ice cream going with this. Going back to my childhood, this is a, a play on. Kid just gets his ice cream cone at the stand and he drops it. It's all over the sidewalk. It's going to be very abstract and splattery. I like where you go with food. There's always a concept behind it. Let me ask you though, do you think that this is elevated enough to win the trophy and the title? 100% chef. This is going to be a knockout dessert, but showing restraint and sophistication at the same time. Let me give you some advice. Don't look back, just keep looking ahead. Thank you, Chef. Means a lot to me. Looking good, Trev. Hey, Taya. Chef Alvin. So what are you doing? Right now, I am working on a sponge toffee. OK. So you're doing an elevated coffee dish, right? More the flavors that are in traditional Mexican coffee, orange, cinnamon, chocolate. I love the orange and the coffee. Sounds amazing. Do you drink a lot of coffee? I love coffee. You're becoming a chef already. I can tell you, chef just drank coffee all day long. <laughs> There's a lot of component in this dish. Remember, you only have 20 minutes. Yes. Thank Hello. you, chef. You know, I'm a bit worried. There's a lot of element on that plate, Ugh. and I hope he has the energy to push through. I'm gonna die. So Trevor he is making pizzelle. It is really, it's like an Italian wafer-thin cookie that can be shaped once it's hot into a cone. Perfect for ice cream. And let's, let's go! On. 10 minutes! <laughs> Taya's cake is out of the oven now. That's gonna be a sigh of relief for her. I need to cool my cakes. Now I need to plate. I'm good. Look at the way Trevor's plating. Trevor is an artist. My hands are shaking like a leaf. I know I need to make sure my plating is absolutely beautiful. You have five minutes left. In five minutes, the MasterChef Canada kitchen will be closed. I go to my ice cream machine, and it's nowhere near being frozen. How's it looking, Trev? Trevor is starting to panic because his ice cream is not setting. He's not going to have enough time to set it. If I don't nail this ice cream, I just have a chocolate puddle on a plate. His MasterChef journey could end right now. Oh, God. He's only got four minutes left. My only option is liquid nitrogen. It's a crazy gamble. I've never worked with it before. Let's give it a shot. Trevor is really thinking like a chef and adapting to the situation. Using liquid nitrogen is always risky, but it's either try it or serve as soup. Brilliant! Two minutes! You only have two more minutes left! Two minutes! Come on, girl, you can do it! I'm gonna do a little mousse. Oh my god, that looks amazing. That ice cream and that liquid nitrogen, it's gotta come out right about now, otherwise it will be like a rock. One problem turns into another. The mold is so frozen that it's actually rock solid. I can't get the ice cream out of the mold, but I gotta keep pushing hard to get this dessert out. So Trevor's just come back from the equipment room with a torch. So now he's heating the bottom of that silicone mold, which should release the ice cream. He is not giving up and needing a shake. Taya has just bought her ice cream from the blast freezer, and she has one minute to make canals and get it on the plate. This is so much pressure, but I gotta shake it off because I need to make the best damn dessert that these judges have ever tasted. There we go. There you go, it's coming out. Yay! Wow, he's doing it. <laughs> 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, hands up! 
Trevor, please describe your dessert. What you have in front of you is a chocolate mint gelato with a Dutch cocoa pizzelli cone and a creme fraiche whip. Let's try this dessert. You know, this dish really resonates with me. The ice cream is obviously a bit hard. It's a bit too frozen. That's a common mistake when you're working with liquid nitrogen. However, having said that, the flavor that you have is divine. Great balance of chocolate and mint, really playful. I love it. Thank you very much. Great flavors, that big, bold, bitter chocolate with fresh poppy mint, which is a perfect combination. You have the balance just right. In the ice cream, I taste a bit of salt, and that's a very good idea. That little bit of salt brings out that chocolate even better. I like it. I like it very much. Thank you, Chef Alan. All right, Taya, tell us about your dessert. My dessert is a play on a cafe de olla. So I did a orange cake with a sponge toffee, dark chocolate mousse, and a cinnamon ice cream. Mm. Watching the judges is like the worst and the best all wrapped together because you really don't know what they're thinking. It's like an emotional roller coaster. Taya, first thing, I gotta compliment you on your plating. Thank you, Chef. You've been able to create a great sense of balance, proportion, color to create this one dessert. And that's that's not easy. The flavors are classic Taya. They're big, they're bold. There's a lot of flavor happening on one plate. Taya, you got a lot of lovely elements on this dish. Ice cream, cinnamony, smooth, creamy. The caramel, buttery, but what's the name of the dessert? Cafe de Oya. I did not get the cafe, but overall, great job. But I would have preferred a little bit more coffee in my coffee dessert. Understood, chef. 